The year 2023 saw a tremendous rise of the right wing across the globe, be it France, Germany, Finland, the Netherlands, in Europe, to the United States and Argentina across the Atlantic. Well, the rise of the right, especially the far right, was evident in all these regions. Stricter immigration laws, Islamophobic attitude, hesitation for LGBTQ rights and climate change denial. These are some of the distinctive features of the far right narrative. Now, the rise of the far right meant the consolidation of some or all of these narratives. France was on the boil in June this year. A teenage boy of Algerian and Moroccan descent was killed by the police. The violence that ensued after the killing was primarily attributed to young individuals, including minors and migrants from black and Arab communities. Over a span of five consecutive nights, France witnessed widespread riots, resulting in over 3,000 arrests nationwide. This incident has brought to the fore the extent of racial polarization in France. Enter the far right, Le Pen's party. The national rally did really well in last year's French presidential election. The party is set to gain seats in the European Parliament elections next June as well. Mainstream politicians worry the far right is already poised to strike in France as well. Now, the rise in anti Semitic incidents linked to the Israel Hamas war as well as recent terror attacks and other incidents of violence have once again sparked a debate about French identity, immigration, and extremist violence. The RNs has now risen from a fringe movement known as racist and xenophobic to a firmly entrenched player in mainstream French politics. And talking about right-wing entrenching itself in mainstream politics, let's also shift our focus to the Netherlands now. The victory of Gerd Wilders, a far-right anti-Islam populist in the parliamentary election has put the Netherlands at a crossroads. The nation was long seen as one of the most socially liberal countries in Europe. Wilder's Party for Freedom emerged as the single largest party with 37 seats in the 150-member lower house. Wilder's is now on a potential path towards becoming the country's first far-right prime minister. Over the years, Wilder's has built an image of himself as one of the most radical far-right populists in Europe. He has called for de-Islamizing the Netherlands, shutting down mosques, banning the Quran and closing the borders to migrants from Muslim majority countries. He made the influx of migrants a political issue during the campaign, which appears to have helped him deal the greatest blow to the political establishment. Across the Atlantic, another populist far-right candidate rose to power in Argentina. In just three years, Javier Millet, an eccentric libertarian economist, managed to create a political party and become president of Argentina. Millet's campaign was based on radical political and economic ideas. Politically, he proposed the deregulation of gun possession, the creation of a marketplace for human organs, and minimized the human rights violations of the military government in the 1970s. Throughout his campaign, he also engaged in many extraordinary high-impact stunts, throwing creative insults at his opponents, calling the Pope the representative of evil on earth and waving a chainsaw in public rallies are just some of them. Now, Since coming to power last month, the Millet administration already announced severe public spending cuts and a decision to weaken the value of the Argentinian peso by more than 50% against the US dollar. More of such actions are expected in the coming months as well. Now enough on the rise of the right. We now come to a nation where the conservatives are in a fix. The United Kingdom. The Conservative Party is again in a state of self-inflicted crisis in the UK. Just this month, the immigration minister resigned from the government of Rishi Sunak. The Sunak government has brought another version of the Rwanda asylum plan. The earlier plan was struck down by the Supreme Court this year, although there is no guarantee that the reworked flagship legislation will pass. What was once a policy whim is now seen as a life or death matter for Tory lawmakers. The Labour is gaining ground as the Conservative crisis deepens. The Labour Party now has a 20-point lead over the Tories.